Hey, Danielle, how are you? Hi, Dominic. I'm doing well, thank you. How about yourself? I am good. Thank you for joining me on the show. We had a bit of a kerfuffle finding people to talk about ROI, and uh, it was so nice to see you suggest a topic on this. Hey, thank you. I appreciate just being here and talking about and having the discussion, really. Um, yeah. I, I definitely don't have all the answers, but when it comes to ROI, I mean, I like the discussion, so. Well, that's what maybe you and I can come up with some good questions for people about ROI, and they can figure it out because everybody needs their own way of figuring these things out. Right. It's just nice to have a path, right? Yeah. Um, okay, why, don't, why don't we take a step back? Danielle, who the heck are you? And why would you be talking to this group of contractors and construction people all around the world? Oh, cool. Well, my name is Danielle Putnam, and I'm the president of the New Flat Rate. Hmm. Not that everybody else cares, but that's you know what I go by by title. Yeah. Uh, really, I'm just an entrepreneur, and I think that that's more exciting to say. I'm an entrepreneur. I love business. I love thinking about business and how to help people grow their businesses. But our company, we have a pricing system, so we help contractors to price their services in the homes by offering menus. Perfect. So you're already used to talking about numbers to contractors mm -hmm. and how to present those in a logical way. So I think it's perfect that you're going to be talking to us about ROI. Yeah, we do that a lot as far as numbers. So I, I hope so. I think it's yeah. perfect too, really. Yeah. I should actually back up for a second because some people don't, maybe don't use the word ROI that stands for return on investment. Mm -hmm. And I think we all need to demand a return on investment for anything we do, right? You wouldn't buy a tool unless... Isn't that the truth? You, you wouldn't buy it unless you were going to make some money and have a return on investment. But you know, Dominic, in the trades, I find a lot, we've got a lot of nice people and nice people like to help people yeah. and they know that they're skilled workers. Hey, I can fix that for you and it will only take me a second and I'm going to use this hammer. No big deal. I don't really get, need to get my money's worth on the hammer. It didn't really cost me that much. You know, we have a lot of that tendency of, of just good, nice people in the yeah. trades, yeah. but it is important and it is a good thing to make money. There's nothing wrong with getting, getting the money and being a profitable business so that you can better provide for your family and your employees and your teams and grow and, and buy the equipment that you need to do the best jobs for your customers, right? Right, right. Well, and there's some very specialized equipment out there and I think we might take it for granted. Doesn't everybody mm -hmm. have this name the machine, right? Forklift, mm -hmm. scissor lift, slab jacking equipment, whatever it is. Doesn't yeah. everybody have it? No. Well, that's right. They don't. A lot of them rent it. They don't all have it. Sometimes they rent it or they borrow it from a friend, especially if you've got friends in other trades in, in town. Yeah. You know, I wish I'd known this years ago because uh, I've had two painting companies in my past lives when I mm -hmm. had darker, more hair. <laughs> I was younger. <laughs> Um, and I used to keep renting pressure washers and now oh. I go through the stores and I see pressure, you know, decent pressure washers for yes. 400 bucks. And I think mm -hmm. they used to be $2,500. And I thought there's no right. way I could ever afford one. I have to rent yeah. it. Again. Yeah. So interesting. A couple of years ago, uh, well, a little bit more than a couple of years ago, I was newly married at the time and my dad got me a, a birthday present and he's a really good gift giver. I always look forward to it. I don't expect it because gifts are gifts. You can't expect them, right? But he shows up and drops off a pressure washer in my driveway. I was like, oh, because that. that's a great gift for me. Thank you. But you know who was thrilled was my husband. Like as a newly married couple, he's like, oh my gosh, your dad gave us a pressure washer. Uh, but he did it because I kept borrowing his, not oh. to use it because my husband wanted to use it. So my husband kept asking me, will you borrow your dad's pressure washer? Will you borrow your dad's pressure washer? Oh, yeah. And he was doing the driveway and the house and all this stuff. And so finally my dad just bought us one. Well, now fast forward, Dominic, a lot of people I've seen actually, interestingly enough, this year have gotten into pressure washing as a side business, their side hustle, oh. because it was an affordable way to begin making money during the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. So I've seen uh, a photographer that does all of our business photography and things like that. He actually started doing pressure washing. <laughs> no Some of my employees are doing pressure washing on the side now. I don't know why. They still have their job. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, a, a lot of people are doing it. So side trail about pressure washing. It's more affordable now. And people are buying them and then going out and selling the work. Right. So sometimes you have to buy the equipment and, and you may or may not have the money in the bank. And so the, the discussion that we're talking about too, maybe this will go in with, with that, is, hey, do I go ahead and buy the equipment or do I wait until I have enough in savings to make the purchase? Right. If you have the, the money in savings, awesome. Go buy it. 
and then you don't have any you know pressure you don't have to feel stressed out you just go sell the jobs or whatever but if you don't have the money then what do you have to have a plan to sell the work to sell the work well you know it's funny that you say that i wish i talked to you how many years ago now over 30 years ago when i was so what i would do is i would walk through a neighborhood and this mm -hmm. was my second painting company my second painting company was called ladderman home services Awesome. But you had to say it like a suit. Letterman. I am let. That was my superhero. I could Even climb a better. ladder. No fear. Climb a ladder. But so Even I would better. walk up to a house and knock on the wind, knock on the door. And I didn't know what service I'd sell them until I walked up their driveway. Oh, you need driveway wow. ceiling. You need pressure washing. You need gutter cleaning, window washing. You need painting. Wow. You need your deck prepared. I just walked up. And as I saw stuff, I started talking. As Did you really? That's how you end up doing this. And I could talk, right? Wow. But if I sold pressure washing to that first house, let's just say. Mm -hmm. everybody else I talked to, I'm like, you need pressure washing because I don't, I knew I already rented it. Now I'm yeah. going to try to make as much money as I could from it. Okay, so I guess, brilliant. I guess that's kind of ROI. I wanted to get mm -hmm. a return on my investment for mm -hmm. the pressure washer. But yeah, so often I see people buying things on gut, you know, it's mm -hmm. a CNC, it's a forklift. It's, it's mm -hmm. some, it's other, another piece of major capital equipment. And mm -hmm. they think I'm going to buy it. I know we need it. Mm -hmm. which makes sense, but they don't mm -hmm. necessarily do the math. Is there a, is there some sort of formula or rule of thumb that you look for for yeah, great business question. owners mm -hmm. on ROI? Yeah. The, the simple one to start with is if you're going to use it once, rent it. If you're going to use it twice, buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, we go by that simple rule of thumb, but when you're talking about large pieces of equipment, uh, like a bucket truck, yeah. you know, for example, like something that, is it something that you're going to use in your business often enough and if so again what's the plan to sell that kind of work do you have a backlog of projects so if you have a backlog of projects that will use that great then buy it if you do not then you have to really have that plan in place of how to sell that work consistently you're going to need to put it in your marketing is it something this i think is is important too dominic is it something that you can offer your current customers or do you have to find a different kind of customer oh, for smart. this equipment so Right. Can you go back to the old customers or the customers you're already selling to and just mm -hmm. add it on? Right. Or is it an entirely new line of business? Yes. Mm. Because I don't know that you want to just get into a new vertical because, hey, we needed a bucket truck on that job and we're using them a lot lately. We really could use it. Okay, well, what do you do? Do you yeah. work in the home? Do you work on the home? Trees, signs? You know, it's just got to make logical sense. Yeah. It's, um, there's a difference and I learned this back in high school. There's a difference between what I need and what I want. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have yes. a clear understanding of what I want, you know, if, if I want a new quad or a dirt bike, that's mm -hmm. different than do I need a new mm -hmm. quad or a dirt bike. Now, by the way, I, I absolutely need both of those things. Of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. But <laughs> see, I can justify that. What would you call that? Emotionally versus logically. Yeah. But for a business owner, the same thing, you know, we had our hedges done just yesterday here. And the mm -hmm. guy came and he had a bucket truck mm -hmm. to do our hedge. We've got a big laurel hedge. A laurel is something that if you feed it an ounce of water, it'll grow like a weed for a year. It's crazy. Oh, tree, gosh. But, uh, yeah. yeah. They, they don't, they're not ever. But imagine kudzu if it was a tree. Oh, it just right. Because that's, that's what we have here. We call it kudzu. It's everywhere. Kudzu. Yeah, it's yeah. everywhere, right? So this guy came with a bucket truck and mm -hmm. he did our hedge better than anybody else has ever done it and faster. And I thought, isn't that smart? Everybody else comes with a ladder. And their mm -hmm. long extension pole pruner, and they they do the hedge do a good job. This guy did it with a bucket truck and it, like dental precision. Wow! But so what am and I going to tell my neighbors? Yeah, and faster, right? Okay. So he could theoretically do my house in whatever time it took and go to the next job. Right. Or, so he he got a lot of efficiency out of that too. So when yeah. you're looking at ROI, you definitely want to look at your income if it's a new thing that you're selling, but also the efficiency to be able yeah. to fit more jobs in a day. Yeah. Did it save him time? Mm -hmm. so that he could do more jobs or do one job faster, increasing his hourly rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you see in the field when people are looking at new equipment? What's, what's driving their decision? Well, so much of my customer base, they're entrepreneurs, so it's emotions. But that's not the answer that you want. That's just the reality. Well, it's the, rea that, it's the reality for me too. And, and quite often they're right. They know their trade. They know they need mm -hmm. whatever it is uh, and they'll yeah. be able to sell more. But really, I think what you what you want to get to and what you're asking is, besides just the emotion and that, hey, I'm walking through Home Depot or I'm walking through, you know, a place with big equipment and I just want it, you know, being realistic about it and being a little bit more of the strategic planning mindset, mm -hmm. which businessmen 
and business people have, but more of the entrepreneur doesn't always have that hat. So putting that strategic thinking hat, stepping back and taking it through a process flow of, okay, I need this piece of equipment or I feel that I need this piece of equipment. I have used this equipment how many times in the last year? Mm -hmm. How much money did it cost us? How much money did we charge for the job? How and what is my plan to use it in the future? Who's going to use it? What's the process for that? Who's going to own it? Who's going to have the keys? How's it going to be safe? What's the insurance? So walking through, yeah, maintenance, the whole project plan. So often we don't want to step back and do that. We want to pull the trigger because we don't have time, right? We're running our businesses. We're busy. We don't have time to put on the project management strategic thinking hat. Uh, So we have to step back, although we don't want to, and walk ourselves through a matrix. Yeah. Yeah. A pathway. I would, I would agree with you 100%. And I think what you said there about the time as a business owner, we're already pulled in a million directions. And I often say on this show, go buy yourself a coffee and sit mm. alone at a coffee shop yes. with a notepad and a piece of paper. And you're going to yes. look like the crazy person in the back of the shop talking to themselves, coffee shop yeah. talking to themselves. But I want you to. You have yeah. to do the math, even if you don't, if, mm-hmm. if we don't, if you and I don't have a pre printed form for the logical conclusion of an ROI calculator, it doesn't matter. Sit down yeah. and do exactly what Danielle just said. Do I need this? If I do, how much can I sell it for? How much am I mm-hmm. renting it for now? What's the maintenance cost? Mm-hmm. What's the upkeep? Where am I going to store it? Is it going to get stolen? Is it going to be more headache than it's worth? And write yeah. those things down logically and make the decision based on your business. But just doing things out of pure emotion is where you get in trouble sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I like the whole take a cup of coffee and go sit down and think. That's what we have to do is take time to think. You know, about the scissor lifts, I my dad was a contractor all my life, heating and air electrical and plumbing contractor. Mm-hmm. And so he would rent scissor lifts and got to the point where he's like, you know, I don't need to rent these. I'm going to buy them. And then because I'm going to buy them, I'm going to rent them out to other people because I've always been renting scissor lifts. So I'm going to buy them and I'm going to rent them to other people. So he buys all these scissor lifts and he puts them in, you know, what we call the shop yard, like the shop where the office was in the right. yard there with all the service trucks. And there, there was a gate around it. All lifted and up so, and- yep. So on the weekend, he lifted them all up, put a big old sign on them, rent me, had several of them in the lot, you know, all over the place. And then what happened that weekend? A storm came, blew every one of them over on all the service trucks and devastated the shop yard. Uh, Big problem, big cleanup problem. I was young at the time, so I couldn't tell you what he collected on insurance and or if he did. But I can tell you that he did not get back into the scissor lift business. Right. But asking him about the story in hindsight, what I've heard him say was, I was not in the rental business. He's like, I rented this stuff and I got the equipment and I used it, but I was, I didn't know how to have a rental business. And so it never worked for me and I couldn't have made money. So when it comes to ROI on that kind of, if, if you're tracking with me, Mm -hmm. like renting it out, getting your ROI on the services that you do. He was an electrical contractor. He could sell his time for that scissor lift on his jobs but he did not know how to be in the rental business. And so he wanted to buy it and get an ROI, <clears throat> excuse me, for moving into a new vertical. And right. he wasn't prepared to do that. So that would have not actually been good for him. So he learned, hey, I'm not going to get my ROI on that because I don't know how to run a rental business. So with equipment, buy it if you're going to use it for your main business. Yeah, I love it. It would be interesting if we ever talked to him what his side of that story would be. But uh, <laughs> he'd probably say I went and pushed them all over one night with my friends. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of cow tipping. Yeah. You know what? One of the other places I see ROI coming in is where a business owner is a little bit stubborn and they don't spend the money when they need to. And this mm-hmm. came up in a case where um, a contractor has a trailer and they're towing equipment to a site. And the, the simple solution that came out after a lot of hand wringing and scratching their heads was a heavier duty, longer trailer. Instead of making two trips Yes. Or mul- sorry, multiple trips to multiple trucks to the job yes. site. And it, it's funny how just a, changing the equipment sometimes does make sense, but it doesn't, it, the outside perspective, you know, having somebody uh-huh. like you or me look at it because we're not in the day to day. Yeah. We're like, well, have you ever thought about getting a bigger trailer or a cover trailer Brilliant. or a different kind of truck or vehicle Brilliant. or, or, or. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes it makes sense to buy something else or different or look at the problem a different way. Brilliant. You know, new good equipment is really underrated, undervalued, under talked about. Uh, I love what you said. Just get a bigger, better, different trailer. We get used to kind of living in the poverty mentality. We get used to what we have and feeling like we can't invest in something better. 
But then the minute you invest in something better, your efficiencies, they do go through the roof. Right. And then your team, your team morale too. Like think of, of technician vans, your vans and your fleet. You know, are they driving old vans? Are they driving nice new wrapped trucks? I mean, mm. what are they driving? It really does help the employee morale, but also your company image and your efficiency. Uh, it's funny you say wrapped vehicles because I've often wondered, it's, it, what's the ROI of a wrapped vehicle? And it's one of those things, it's hard to measure unless you have a really good call to action, unless the phone number is there and it's a different phone number so you can track, right. you know, and that's, that's actually a lot of work, but mm -hmm. is there an ROI for wrapping your vehicle? And for people who don't know, Daniel's talking about you buy a van, let's mm -hmm. say a Mercedes Sprinter van, and you cover it with one big sticker that has all of your branding on it for a mechanical contractor like the industry you came from. But that's a case where I might actually make a gut decision to go, I think we need to wrap this to look mm -hmm. professional and then you mm -hmm. elevate yourself as well. So it's, it's a combination here. What I'm listening to you learning is, okay, maybe ROI isn't just the paper. Maybe there's some emotion, but it still has to be driven by a need versus a want. Mm -hmm. Do I need better customers and better neighborhoods who understand I'm a high value provider? Wrap the vehicle. Do I just mm -hmm. want prettier vans? Yeah. Good point. Good you point. Know? And you mentioned being able to have a different phone number to track. And so I just wanted to say the word call rail. You probably already know who they are, but call rail is a very, very easy, affordable way to have another phone number. So all of your trucks could have their own phone number on them. Very easy. And then you can just pull reports and analytics and see who called and when through call rail. It's really, really cheap. Yeah. Now your drivers may not like that because if they start to get a lot of complaints that right. phone number four seven three five is <laughs> yeah. running red lights and cutting people off in traffic. Yeah, <laughs> but That's it true. is it is very easy to track with with tools like Call Rail or something mm -hmm. else uh, ways to track where your your clients are coming from. And when we talk about affluent marketing, when we talk about going up market, uh, which is of course where you get higher profit, higher dollar volume jobs, more hours uh, in nicer neighborhoods which I had a painter once say to me because I moved him towards the affluent market. He was doing mm -hmm. homes that were like 2,500 square feet and he moved into 8,000 square foot homes. Interesting. And, and his biggest takeaway was, you know what I like the best dog? Nobody's breaking into my truck anymore. Wow. Because <laughs> he's in a nicer neighborhood. So what's wow. the ROI for all of that? Wow. Yeah. So he didn't say, uh, he didn't say because it's a larger square footage house, I am selling you know, more time, more money, bigger projects. That no, was he did. as well. He did. He did. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's just a super funny guy. So yes, he's like, but, the big benefit was his truck's not getting yeah. broken into in these other names. Like, just say, oh, I'll say that other is, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge. So and we've all heard it. <laughs> yeah. We've all yeah. heard it. It's happened to all of us and it's sad, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. most people sell the tools and what do they get? Yeah. Them, right. Yeah. So ROI calculation comes into all sorts of things, but I think it's part of planning out your business on purpose. I like how you said that. It's so I, I know we all get so busy. We're working in our business, not on it. We all know we all know to work on it. We don't have the time. Uh, you know, I am a strong proponent of processes. You don't have the time until you put the right processes in place and then the right people running those right. processes to be able to step away and work on your business like you want to. Uh, but taking a minute and just doing it the Dom way getting your cup of coffee in a coffee shop and thinking for a second and using your God-given brain to write down what would be the ROI on this. Yeah. I'd love to tell you a secret formula that X plus Y equals Z every time when it comes to equipment, but so often there's a lot of different variables depending on your trade and your vertical. Yeah. And, and so going with the strategic planning again of just real simple piece of paper, you know, what, what's the pathway? What's the pathway? You know, having a plan is better than having no plan. And, mm -hmm. uh, what, I think it's a military saying, but no plan survives contact with the enemy, right? Mm. But we can't go into a battle or a business situation without a plan because then we're just yeah. going to get pushed around in whatever direction. If yeah. we have a plan and something changes, then we kind of already know what plan B, plan C, and plan D would mm -hmm. be. And so yeah. that's this piece of paper thing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest anybody listening to the show right now, if you're wondering how to put this in place, let's start with the very first thing. Mm -hmm. Choose one day of the week when you're going to come into the office 15 minutes late. Think about a coffee shop you drive by on the way to work uh -huh. and stop there first. So let's say it's Tuesdays because that's yeah. random. Every Tuesday, you're going to show up. Instead of showing up at the shop at 730, you're going to go to the coffee shop at 730. Mm -hmm. You're going to buy yourself a coffee, sit at the back, don't talk to anybody, turn off your cell phone, and just write out what you want this business to be because it's your business. And you get to mm -hmm. tell it what you want it to be. 
So if anybody could, if everybody listening could just do that, Tuesdays, 7.30, let's just say, 7.30 to 7.45, you buy yourself one coffee and you start writing in your book. Imagine the difference that'll make over a year. Imagine over 10 years the difference it would make in your business. Logic over emotion. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I'm ready to try it. I hope everybody ready. online is. Yeah. What did they use? They used to have a system called uh, Magic Mondays or Millionaire Mondays where okay. people do that. They write out their goals in the morning. Yep. Do you do that? Do you write your goals? Not to put you well, on the spot. Well, one thing I quit doing on Mondays is having meetings. I do no <laughs> meeting Mondays now. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Cause Mondays were always so you, you never know, you know, especially in the service business, you don't know what happened over the weekend and what problems or fires that you have to put out. And so as a business owner, you come into your office with all these meetings for the day and then you don't have time to do other things, but it wasn't the putting out the fires. It was, I wanted more time to not only think about my week, mm. but to work on high level activities that I get bogged down with and can't do later. So I do no meeting Mondays and on me on Mondays I come in and I just think about my week, think about my company, think about, you know, what I want to happen. Cause there's, there's, I've got little kids. So weekends, you know, I'd, I'd love to say that Sunday nights I'm just working at home, planning my week. It's just not a reality. You know, my no, kids you're are screaming very, on Sunday nights. You're very busy. When I first met you, you were the president as well of women in HVAC. Right. Women in HVAC are this year. I am the immediate past president of women oh, in HVAC. Congratulations. So, that's, oh, that's just as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it is. It's an honor. It's a great group of women. We, we have a great time. We just had our annual conference two weeks ago. It was virtual and it was really good. Uh, we had over 200 women in attendance online and it was, we had a great time. <laughs> but I'll roll off of that at the end of this year and that'll free up a little bit of time. Yeah, that's why I was so, saying it's just as exciting to become yeah. the immediate past president as it is yeah. to get the nomination <laughs> or the vote to be the president. Yeah, it is. Next year will be even more because I won't be anything, no titles anymore. I'm like, oh, all this new time. <laughs> I'll just sit in the back, take a note. Yeah, yeah. it'll be great. Yeah. But do I plan my time? You know, I, I do. So in the mornings, I take a notebook and I do all of my um, items for the day, like all mm -hmm. like a master project list. These are all the things that are due. And then I select three. These are what I call my frogs, the things that I need to focus on first. The most important things to get done today are those three. But Don, I just recently started kind of splitting up my day timer which is just a, a plain notebook. Uh -huh. And I draw a line down the middle now and I've started tracking my time every day. Oh, what size chunks? Fifteens, so, half hours? No, as I go, as I go. Oh, okay. So if I'm, if you and I are on the phone for 40 minutes, I'll write, you know, those 40 minutes that we're on the phone. If mm. we we're on the phone for five minutes, I'd write that down. So I don't do it in blocks. I actually do actual time. If from eight until 8.05, I'm, you know, getting a cup of coffee, I write that down. Wow. And so I'm writing down every energy shift and activity shift on the left. And then on the right, I'm writing down all the things that I'm supposed to get done. And we all know we waste time, but it is embarrassing how much time we waste. Even as the owner. Cause I think I, I know I yeah. waste time now, but I remember when I worked in corporate and by about 10 30 first coffee break, which I took, uh -huh. I'd be like, what am I going to do for the rest of the day? My <laughs> golly, what are you like? <laughs> such a different world uh, yeah. let me ask you though what what that's a very disciplined system and I hope people mm. listening understand that is a very cool thing you're doing very advanced mm. what made you do that what took you to that level I needed more efficiency I, I kept feeling like I only have so much time in the day and then I'm like but and I'm wanting to blame people I wanted to blame people but we cannot blame anybody but ourselves. I felt like people were stealing time from me like a vendor walks into my office and just starts chatting or an employee walks into my office and just starts chatting. Right. Yeah. And I have to protect my own time. And so by writing it down and I'm seeing, Oh, well my executive assistant who's extremely important to me, she's my project manager. I need to talk. But most all of my mornings, the first 45 minutes were her and I just chatting. That was wow. not productive, <laughs> no. you know? So I had to write it down and say, uh, uh, although she is valuable, she cannot be my first meeting of the day. Nice. And so, in that case, what did you do? Did you move her to preset meeting times? No, I moved her off the, I moved her off the book altogether. <laughs> altogether. Okay. Yeah. So that's an interesting approach. The, um, no, no, let I, me be a little bit more serious about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't set her to a preset time because I have not been good. Something I learned this year is that you have to set a system that you as the owner can follow mm. and having a set time. I don't like people to, to control my time. So if I said, Hey, I'm going to meet with Rosalind at nine instead of eight, I would not be on time for those nine o'clock meetings. Uh, so instead I just don't give her my first slot. 
I come in, I make my whole list, I get everything ready for the day, I get really, really focused, and then when I'm ready and I need her for something, then I call her in and I download. These are the priorities and this is what I'm working on. So it might be at 8.30, it might be at 8.45. It's a floating meeting that when I'm ready and I'm focused, I get you're her ready. and make sure that we're on the same projects. You're ready to do it. I love it. That's really good. One of the, one of the things that I picked up from what you're saying there is this goes back to a conversation and we talk about it a lot on the show. It's called Revenue Responsibility Per Hour. And that's something you and I both have as an owner. Anybody listening mm -hmm. to this show is an owner or, or at least a senior leader in their company. Mm -hmm. So we have a revenue responsibility to our company. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do this with my calculator, even though I know the, the math. So let's just say that your business, Danielle, is a million dollars a year because I'm just mm -hmm. picking that out of the air. So one million. Right number. Mm -hmm. um, so and how many hours a year do you work? Now, I'm going to guess again. If you work 50 weeks a year and you work five days a week, ha ha, and you work so many hours, it's, it's about 2,000 hours a year, right? So divided by 2,000 hours, and everybody should do their own math. Mm -hmm. That means one hour of Danielle Putnam's time mm -hmm. is worth 500 bucks. At a million dollars, your business, your time as an owner is worth wow. $500 per hour. Does that mean you bill yourself at 500 bucks for, per hour if you're load balancing a system no but it does mean as an owner mm. yeah i have to make sure my company is producing 500 dollars right. of world value like i'm That's doing right. that kind of business those costs have to be covered because it's real cost it's real cost so that time you're blocking there let's uh, assuming your revenue is a million bucks and you know we can just smile and nod it's a different number but now you can go back and put a value that half hour meeting mm -hmm. where a vendor walked in and said hey you got a minute mm -hmm. that's 250 dollars meeting my friend you better That's be adding right. $251 of value or I'm yeah. going to take you by the elbow. And we're not allowed to do that anymore. Can't touch people. <laughs> but you can ask, you can just say, look, I can't do it today. Let's move it to a yeah. phone meeting. Let's do it next Tuesday at two o'clock. That's when I have time. Because like you, I don't want to be out of control of my time. I want to be proactive about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Revenue yeah, responsibility per hour. I love it. I'm glad you went into that. I need to be reminded of it. And I'm sure so many of us on the call do need to be reminded of that. That when it comes to our time and even our teams and meetings and, you know, techs out in the field or whoever's on your team having meetings together, there's a cost to it. So make sure that it's productive. It has to be productive. Yeah. Because I have, you know, my responsibility or yours, is I've got to actually go get that $500 in value. Mm -hmm. So my people are working tomorrow. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Did you know it actually gets worse? It gets worse as we grow. No, the story gets oh, worse. Gets it's, oh. Well, because it's not 500 bucks. Usually people want to grow when they talk to me or talk to you, right? They want to yes. grow. So they yeah. don't want to be a million dollar business anymore. They want to be a right. $2 million business. Yes. So that means they have to think about their time as if it's a grand an hour. Right. And that's painful. It's really painful to know the real number. So say it's three grand an hour, but yet you want to goof off today because you had a late night. I yeah. mean. <laughs> Yeah, you know, or, or whatever the reason is. You want to goof off because somebody just came in to visit. I had a, a missionary friend of mine drove by the other day and stopped in and hung out with his family and his kids for about two hours in the office. I love seeing people. Yeah. But I need to realize how expensive that was that I have to schedule time like that after five. Yeah. It's Can't be in the middle of the day. day. <laughs> it's got to be at a certain time. So all of mm -hmm. this ROI, these are the, this is the ROI of business ownership. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's, it, we're still on the same conversation, right? It's about, it's about the numbers and the impact of the numbers on the business and where we're taking it. And I, I yeah. think what both you and I are talking about is intention, just being intentional, doing it on purpose. Yeah. You have to just and honest, you have to be honest with yourself and it's painful. The truth yeah. hurts when it comes Br to numbers. Brutal honesty. Yeah. That's why mm -hmm. we get on a scale. Yeah. Our, truth hurts with everything. I'm, like I'm only that, speaking yeah. about myself. That's why. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Danielle, thank you so much for this conversation. It's been great. If hey, somebody wants to find out more about you or the new flat rate or maybe even women in HVACR, how would they contact you? Thank you for that. They can email me at danielle at menupricing.com or, and I'll get that regardless, or for women in HVACR, it's a great organization. If you're a woman in the trades or if you know a woman that's in the trades at all on any level, have them check out women in HVACR. We've got a really great Facebook page that they could be a part of, no cost to do that, with an, a very active uh, chat conversation going on all the time. People out in the field, people in the office. It's really engaging, supportive. I love the, the group. It's a lot of great, great friends. My best friends in the industry and in the trades are from that group. So I really? encourage anybody to really check it out, and especially if you know a, a female in the trades or that wants to get into the trades in, on any level. Be a great group. 
and then my email is Danielle at menu pricing. But hey, Dom, in, in preparation of our talk today, I actually went and put together what I'm calling a new services matrix. And oh. it's kind of what we talked about. It's a pathway to help people walk through. It's not X plus Y equals Z. Instead, it's the questions to ask yourself as you walk through. Is this a piece of equipment that I should purchase? <laughs> Thank to help you. them to make the decision. That's and so, so I'd cool. love to give cool. that. Well, I'd love to give that out. It's a one pager just to help with the thought provoking, uh, you know, questions that we need to make those best decisions. So it's a new services matrix. So shoot me an email, Danielle at menupricing.com. And I'll uh, be happy to send you over that PDF. Oh, thank you for making that. That's that's the piece of paper that you're going to sit at Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts with muttering to and yourself in out. the corner. Yeah, everybody be like, stay away from that guy. Why is he mumbling to himself? Thank you for making that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. And and your name, Danielle, is spelled with two L's, right? Because there's there's a couple of spellings of Danielle, by the way. Good question. D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E. Good yeah. question. <laughs> At menupricing.com. Thank you. <laughs> Great. And if, if somebody's not able to get in touch with Danielle, this will be in the show notes. You know, these shows are always done on YouTube. They're here as an audio for podcasts. Then their show notes are created. We create a blog post for this. So you can if you can't find Danielle, you can at least find me. And then through me, you can find Danielle's episode. And actually, you've been on our show before. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of episodes where you're sharing your wisdom. Uh, and today, you dropped a big one. That was a really interesting time-blocking exercise. Okay, I'll, good. That's big. Yay. Well, I hope that somebody can try it as well and find some value in it. It's really helped me. Yeah, I hope somebody steals that from you and does it themselves. It's, it's pretty eye-opening when we see where our time actually goes. Yeah. It's yeah. painful to me. <laughs> the other day I looked at the clock and I'm like, 2.30? Who did right? that? Like, how did, it, <laughs> how did it just become 2.30? I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Hey, thanks. It's been fun. I appreciate being on here anytime. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.